my name is Eddie Tofbig. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of the Chicago Soybean Complex. Chicago Soybeans. 19 weeks ago, I said here and at every opportunity since, and I quote, the only thing to bear in mind, the only other thing to bear in mind, is not here on this daily chart, but in Chicago soybean mill. And that was, is, the well-highlighted annual key reversal down we saw there for 2023. Not directly related here, but not worth ignoring either. End of quote. I feel I must keep repeating this point, that in all things this year and going forward, should be seen in the shadow of this pattern. Okay, so from the May double top, we have seen prices head lower at the start of June and thereafter. The primary target 11.75 was easily achieved. The secondary hard to reach target in the 11.51 zone was achieved seven weeks ago. The next feature is one I drew and spoke about nine weeks ago, and I quote, I've drawn a new, small, recent, bright red highlighted bearish Andrews pitchfork for the action during May. It's a nascent pitchfork where I decided to place it in anticipation of a possible move, move lower. End of quote. Well, I have not really had to do anything to this pattern. It's not perfect, but it has worked well until the changeover gap, and I'm still this week minded to keep it on to show the bearish angle of attack. Hence, we are a little below the lower time right now, currently at 10.13. It is, actually it's a little bit lower than that now, it's down to 9.95 when I um, did this. It's interesting to note how the changeover gap happened right at the 61.8% Fibon, absolute Fibonacci line at 11.06. I spoke about this six weeks ago and I quote, Below we really only have the 61.8% absolute Fibonacci line at 11.06 before we test down to the November 2020 low at 10.45. That is something to ponder upon. The move lower was quite swift and has continued to be so even today. So. We originally had three bands of static support plus a dynamic support. The first was the previously mentioned 1045 support, then the congestion between 1031 to 1033, which held up prices three weeks ago, then the last, the October 2020 low at 1017. In between these last two was the dynamic support of the late April 2020 to date uptrend currently at 1029, which is highlighted for the moment by the dark blue trend line on my daily chart. Of all these, the uptrend looked the most formidable, but only in relative terms, because as I said two weeks ago, and I quote, I'd ask you to bear in mind the large overhang we have on top between late January to the start of July, roughly between 11.30 to 12.43. Right now, along with the other bearish factors, these sit on top of the market, end of quote. Well, we saw last week and again this week a penetration now a break below all of these levels and we are also stabilizing below, below all of them. It now seems little in the way below bar some congestion based support from September 2020 until the actual September low at 990. And I'm not sure how good a support even that would be given the overhead ammunition pressing down on the market. These actions have also highlighted that the January to May action was a form of halfway hesitation, with the origin of the bearish halfway hesitation starting back in late November last year, and the potential for a move lower is down in the 980 zone, not very far away, just below the September 2020 low. Looking even lower, we do start seeing some longer term supports enter the frame in the 895 to 910 zone, but that is quite a way lower. I will discuss these more fully should we start approaching them. Chicago Soybean Mill. Back in late February this year, down at 326.90, the market consolidated after a significant fall that developed from the middle of November last year. This congestion was different compared to early ones as we had crossing through it back then, the dark blue highlighted extension to the lower trend line currently 324.20 of the July to September 2021 descending triangle. I said 21 weeks ago and I quote, it's maybe nothing but I'm minded after such a force we've seen since last November last year, so that's the previous year, that this may just may see some hesitation around the 327 to 325 zone. 
I'm not certain on that, but it is worth considering. End of quote. Well, Price has utilized this dark blue highlighted extension to the descending triangle as a base back then and rallied back up, eventually ending up being capped with a double top formed over the month of May and with the additional help of the declining long moving average at the time. Currently it's at 364.30 and the 50% Fibonacci line of the August 2020 to March 22 move at 390 even. The construction of this double top inevitably led to a move lower down through the primary target below at 352.40 and the secondary hard to reach target down at 343.30. The Greek key break lower happened at the third attempt at pushing down below the flatlining purple highlighted medium moving average currently at 347.5 which for the moment one must regard as a prime resistance. The double top also spawned a new feature, a May-based bearish Andrews picture, which I drew nine weeks ago. You may remember I only drew this picture to help in showing the channeling low of this market, and I was happy to finesse it or retire it as necessary. However, the market has taken on board this bearish picture at least most of the time. However, the market is also, sorry, uh, most of the time. We have seen prices push up through the upper time, currently at 3.13.20 in early June. Correction, in early July. And again more recently, two weeks ago, filling in the significant change over gap between 3.35.90 to 3.19.5. Since that gap two weeks ago, prices have recovered enough, but it is still has left open a small fraction of the changeover gap which has been filled in right now this week. And mind to look at the original dark blue highlighted lower trend line extension of the July to September 2021 descending triangle which I mentioned earlier as being what well, it was highlighted but it's not highlighted as being the main factor in this pullback higher. Yet this pullback higher has not been sustained at least not so far over the dark over the uh, trend line extension dark blue trend line extension we're now back down below this. Not only this, but also down to levels last seen just after mid-July. Now, I previously discussed last week the possibility that the action since late December last year could be a possible large double bottom. However, as I said last week, and I quote, right now that doesn't sit right with me. And I would suggest further testing of the dark blue trend line and maybe, just maybe, a trip down to the congestion seen between April to August 2020 between 282 and 300, end of quote. I further added that, that I, I, and I quote again, the key point for such an idea is something I raised here 57 weeks ago. So that's now actually 58 weeks ago. Yes, over a full calendar year ago and on every opportunity since, especially back at the close of 2023. So how the whole of 2023 was an annual key reversal down in Chicago soybean mill last year. This feature, this potential if you like, hangs over all of this market more than anything right now all action should be seen in the shadow of this pattern end of quote there are two more features i'd like to discuss and explore the first is the bright red bearish andrews pitch which i've drawn this week on my daily chart it is for the action between early july and this week so it's very prescient but also very early it is not developed and i would happily finesse or withdraw it completely if the market changed but I am hoping it might show the bearish angle of attack for the future. The second is even more recent. We are set up this week already, with still a full day to go to have a weekly key reversal down for this week. If we close tomorrow, Friday night, either over 3.34.30 or under 3.33.70, then we're beyond. Right now we are most definitely looking for a weekly key reversal down for this week. This leads me to wonder if this is yet unfinished action this so far unfinished action this week might soon be a catalyst for further moves lower Chicago soybean oil the market's drift of sideways to lower this year has been through three possibly four congestion bands these were and are 446 uh, 4468 to 4504 made up of the 2014 high at uh, 4504 in the May 2023 low at 44.68. Then the tight 43.80 to 43.94 zone made up of the 50% absolute Fibonacci line at 43.80. And the April 2014 high at 
The nearby neckline extension highlighted in bright red on my daily chart of the October to 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulders top, currently at 44.46. Then the interesting congestion down at 42.65. I mention all these because some 56 weeks ago and numerous times since I said the following about a big descending wedge pattern that was on my daily chart back then and is now high up off the top of my chart. I said the following and I quote, I would consider this descending wedge pattern may, just may, have lately morphed into a possible scallop pattern, end of quote. This was a big pattern idea and the market's decline since autumn of last year fitted in with this with the expectations I voiced of eventually witnessing a fall down to the area of the May and June lows between 48 even and 46 zone, which is where we've been until recently. I've often stated here how I was keeping a very, very close eye on this idea as any significant breakdown below the 48 to 46 zone could signal the start of the rest of this move lower. I said 21 weeks ago and I quote, so far I'm not convinced of the move that we've seen this break lower already. No, not just yet. However, three things to bear in mind. Firstly, this is a really big pattern stretching from November 2022 to date. So do not expect any immediate sharp movements. Secondly, data indicates that about three out of four times the market breaks lower. Just be aware of that. Finally, I would like to float the idea of a recent unusual bear channel, end of quote. Now, the bear channel I mentioned is highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, currently at 36.41 to 44.17. And it starts at the beginning of 2024. Mixed in with this bear channel, close to the upper bear channel line, is the short medium moving average, currently at 44.76, which I previously used this moving average as a proxy for the upper bear channel line when I began tracking the pattern before I drew a proper upper bear channel line in the first place. It still exhibits that function today. Now, we saw earlier the market trying to edge out on the top side of this bear channel, culminating in the late June to early July rally that reached up to the congestion top side in the 38.2% Fibonacci line at 48.95. All these attempts have ultimately been unsuccessful. We are back down where we have been since late April. This week, for the second consecutive week, second consecutive week we are not only below the broken blue upper bear channel line, but also at the same time below the neckline extension of the bright red October 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulder stop. I spoke about these two and their crossover two weeks ago when I said, and I quote, these two cross over and it makes me think that this market may thus be coming to a cusp in choosing which of these two will be the dominant trend line. One way or another, the blue or the red will have to give way. It may not be as early as next week, but it will be soon, end of quote. We have since seen both give way and a new early July to date pattern emerge. A purple highlighted bear channel, company 38.69 to 43 and a quarter. All these actions seem to have secured some significant potentials on the downside. Thus for the original, big, earlier, much earlier mentioned 56 week old big descending wedge pattern, we have the following opportunities on the downside. A primary target X would be in the 33.70 zone, the secondary at much harder to reach target X1 down in the 16 and a quarter zone. Even a cursory examination of these two targets and one can induce some notable points. The primary target down at 33.70 is just above the 50% absolute Fibonacci line at 33.45 and is doable, especially with the addition of the monthly key reversal down we saw in July. The secondary target at 16.45 is so far down that calling it harder is a massive understatement. We would have to be down to levels not seen since May 2002 and I would think achieving that is a monumental task and one right now that in all truth I could not endorse. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.